How's it going this week, everybody? This week I'm going to be having a two-part episode. It's uh, two women that just happen to have the same name that had very similar skinwalker encounters. And the similarities here are quite disturbing. They're actually, one of them's from Canada and the other one is from the continental United States. And, you know, it, conversing with these two, it's really made me think back on the Mimic episodes and, and really it's changed my opinions a little bit on what what we might have been dealing with in those situations so give this episode a listen very interesting also before we get started this episode is sponsored by smoky mountain squatch coffee company i really love the coffee there's a 10 percent off discount code for my audience if you use ctu at checkout also just want to do a quick shout out to all the members that have been signing up you guys really help keep things going around here if you are interested in signing up for the membership you can get access to interviews that have never aired and early access to new episodes before they come out thanks for listening Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of that that kind of folklore stuff. The, the Skinwalker stuff is real interesting to me because I have a lot of I have a lot of people to contact me about them, but it seems like only about fifty percent will actually come on and talk about it, which is interesting. Yes, uh, yes, I've experienced the same thing. I uh, where this has taken place is on a res and like a reservation, and no one will talk about it. That's native. Yeah, I wonder why that is. You know, I um, I've got some people. Uh, like I live in the in the Southwest. Um, oh, nice. We, yeah, we've got a lot of like the Skinwalker stuff out in the deserts out here, and yeah, it's it's weird, man. Like I, I've talked to a lot of people, and it it just seems like no one really wants to talk about it for some reason. But people are seeing something, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing your story. So why don't you uh, why don't you just take it from the beginning and uh, tell me what happened? What what'd you see? So I often go where my in-laws are, which is about two minutes outside of this uh, reservation. And my grandmother-in-law has pretty much been followed by something in her basement for years. It's, it's been about three generations of people that have seen something in her basement. And... What that consisted of was just seeing the typical red eyes close to the ceiling. That's all they ever really saw. And I knew about this, and I did want to see it. I'm not going to lie. I did want to see it because I'm very curious. And this particular trip, we were going up to help her pack up our belongings that we had been storing in her basement. So I think we might have stirred something up because we had gone into the basement, which is about 150 years old stone. It's terrible. And we started moving stuff around. Later that night, I was going to bed. We were going to bed. And it was very, very quiet, extremely quiet, which is strange because her grandmother was watching TV in the, in the bedroom right beside, but it was very, very quiet. And I needed to go to the washroom, so I started walking across the hall, and as I was walking across the hall, I saw something that was taller than the doorway in the house, so I would say it was about close to seven feet. and. What I saw, it looked massive. I couldn't make out facial features of it, but it was wider than the doorway, taller than the doorway, and absolutely terrifying. And I don't usually react to things like that because I'm pretty used to experiencing paranormal events. So when this happened, I ran back into my room and shut the door, and my wife said she felt something as well. And... It actually had blocked out the light that was in her grandma's room. Her grandma sleeps with the door open. So the, usually you can look in and see the TV going, the alarm clock, and her nightlight. This completely blocked out 100% of the light. All I could see was this massive thing. And my wife actually felt it, too, from the room, though she couldn't see it from, from the angle. 
but it was, I have never experienced anything like that. And it was absolutely terrifying. What do you, what do you think these creatures are? Do you think that they're some type of physical entity or do you think that there's something else going on? I think there's something else going on. I think it can make itself into what it wants to. And ever, actually, ever since this has happened, I've experienced a ton of mimicking in my house. Where something is pretending to be either my voice, my wife's voice. We also live with my mother. We can, and we'll be upstairs and I'll hear my mom screaming out in pain and then we'll run down and she's fine. Dude, what no, the I'm not sure. what the fuck, dude? I I have had so many mimicry instances on this show, and every time I hear about that kind of shit, it's just so disturbing to me. Um, yeah, it real. This, oof, the, it really freaked me out because I was upstairs, and my wife heard me scream out in pain, so she ran up, and I was perfectly fine. And then I I went upstairs again, and then I heard it happened with my mom and she was asleep so there's there was no way it was it's really creepy how often does this kind of stuff uh happen how, how what was the frequency of it this stuff now is probably happening about three times a week so it's still active whatever it is oh yes yes and we have to go back there in two weeks to finish cleaning out the basement <laughs> Man, that stuff is so disturbing. You know, whenever I hear about mimicry, it's just very disturbing. There's something very unsettling about that to me because I don't know. It, it's just that if it's mimicking, that sounds very mal that, that seems very malicious. You know, there's no really other exactly. purpose for for it to do something and, like that. And I've actually it's uh, shown itself to be like my mom standing outside on the porch, and then I come in and. She is downstairs watching TV. Mm. Yeah, I talked yeah. to I talked to a girl. Um, I'm actually still pretty good friends with her. Her and I talk on a pretty regular basis. But um, this was years ago that I had her on my show, like way back when I first started doing this. And she um, yeah. she described it as like she didn't call it a skinwalker, but it was very demonic, you know, kind yeah. of style yeah. stuff. And it was just like. Um, it appeared as her with no face. And, oh, no. Yeah, it's that kind of stuff. And I'm like, dude, what are you... Like, that, that's the kind of stuff that freaks me out. You know, you always hear about the old... Um, what are they? The old historical accounts of stuff like this, like from the medieval ages. And, the doppelgangers. Yeah. And it's like... Yeah. I don't, I don't understand how these things operate or function because people are seeing something, you know, and absolutely it, it's when, when you go back to like the medieval ages and, and their descriptions of stuff, a lot of people and historians will, will chalk it up to, you know, the, the old mythical monster stories and stuff, but the, the whole like demonic stuff seems to be pretty consistent throughout time. And still there's, you know, there's the modern accounts of demonic possession and that kind of stuff. And then now we get into yeah. this whole skinwalker thing and people have described them very differently to me over the years. Um, some people I've interviewed have seen them as like odd humanoid, whatever. Um, some yeah. people call them like uh, animals of, so of some kind. And I just, it's, yeah. it's very strange. And it seems to be way more frequent now. Do you think that um, it's tied to the Native American cultures, or do you think it's just something that they witnessed? And, you know, I don't know how familiar you are with their kind of lore behind it, but like we were talking about earlier, is that they don't really talk about it openly, you know? So. Yes. I I think it's something uh, very connected into their culture, at least out out there. And to them, if you talk about it, it will manifest itself. But, but there were sightings of over 20 people seeing the same thing at a party, of, of it running through a party, and no one will talk about it. Well, okay, let's, let's back up. I want you to tell that story. What, what happened there? What's what? On a, it's it's all uh, so this has been told th to me through the grapevine, if you will, 
and uh, I was not a witness to this, but apparently they they were just outside having a bonfire. There were about 25 people, and they heard this horrific screaming noise, and something ran through the party where everyone saw this beast screaming and running through the party, and they all ran home, and no one has ever, no one will talk about it. No one will talk about it. That's so disturbing, you know, I, that sounds like, you know, that good old campfire story, but the thing is when 25 people see it, it's kind of like, not a, it's not exactly. a tall tale. And there were other witnesses who were at their homes at the time, and this was going around the homes at the same, like about two minutes before uh, knocking on the windows, and then it it went to this party. Maybe it wanted a beer, I'm not sure. <laughs> Well, what's really disturbing to me about that is the the mimic thing that I dealt with um, uh, through that girl that I told you about earlier. She, yeah. um, after our interview, like one of the things that I experienced uh, after our interview was for a, a period of time there was tapping on my window, and I've talked about this at length on the oh. show, so people people can can go back to previous episodes and find me talking about this. But I, I, you know, right. I've been talking about this for over a year. But one of the things that I experienced was tapping on the window at night. And yeah, you know, I have experienced that myself, actually. Whenever there's consistency, is when it gets really creepy. You know, I man, that's disturbing. That's very disturbing. I wonder if she dealt with uh, one of these creatures rather than maybe something demonic or whatever. Makes me wonder. She has never seen this particular thing, but she says she sees people in her house. People? I, I, I don't know. Like, what? Let me ask this. Did anybody describe at that bonfire what this creature looked like? Did, did anybody give descriptions? Was it, like, humanoid? Was it something else? Was it, you know, what did it look like? Was it, it animal? It looked like from, from uh, the description I received from one of the sons of, the wit of one of the witnesses was it looked like a very tall, kind of gangly werewolf. Sounds about right. That kind of animal-style creature. That's what I hear about a lot of, too. Yes. And very fast, and insanely fast. Do you think? Have you heard about the dog man sightings? No, I haven't. I was I was looking through and saw that it, that piqued my curiosity. Yeah, you know, the dog man is very interesting to me because a lot of people talk about this thing, and I'm I'm in a couple groups for it, and people talk about stuff that they've seen, and I've also interviewed people on the show that think they've seen at least some type of thing resembling the dog man and it makes me wonder what if the dog man is actually um this like creature or whatever that would make a lot of sense because it, it did look like a, a a dog man and uh, with red eyes but everyone always says the same thing it always had red eyes the the last dog with the last episode i did referring to the dog man was uh I can't remember the episode number. It was the title was "Was it the Dog Man?" and mm -hmm. was yeah, no, was it that or was it? I can't remember. I'm getting my I'm getting my episodes mixed up. I don't think that was right. I think the <laughs> the was it the Dog Man was the one that thing that ran out in front of the car. Something Skinwalker in the yeah, it was something Skinwalker in the name. I think now that I remember, um, I but I can't remember the name of the episode off the top of my head. But I do remember this guy describing very specifically that it had like a very dark colored eye. And it was it was red as he described it, which was very interesting to me. Now you see all all these things are piecing together. You see how all this stuff comes together. It's super creepy. And he was a genuine witness. You know, this wasn't some guy that was, you know, screwing around. He, you know, him and I talked at length about it. You know, off the air too. It was like he saw this animal humanoid creature that was peering at him and mimicking his um, brother's voice or something like that. And. Uh, oh. Like, like, you see how all of this is coming together? This is what's so freaky about this show, yes. is it's like the mimicry, yeah. the, the tapping on the windows at night, the, the red eyes, the, you know, all these little details from all these different stories and people. And this is why I like doing this show is because, like, these are the moments that I, that I get all thrilled about is, like, when, when I get a new witness and they just start, you know, popping off on all the, all the points that are just like, yes, this is what people are seeing. And it also kind of reworks some of my previous um, theories about stuff. It's like, okay, 
you know, I was I was kind of convinced like maybe this was um, a skinwalker, and now it's like yes, that was definitely a skinwalker because it shares all these characteristics. Because um, one of the the creatures that I'm still not too con- um, what, what what what's the word that I should use that I'm not too f- familiar with, familiar, and there's no maybe? yeah, th- there's no consensus on on what it is and how they how these two different creatures are related to each other. There's the crawlers and the and the um is it skin no it's crawlers and rakes that's what it is the crawlers and the rakes are these like yes they're like these white the white humanoid uh creatures people say that they're different like i get in the forums and stuff and talk to people and people are like no these things are definitely different but um i can't really seem to figure out exactly what the differences are between them but they're, they're just so very similar and maybe it's just like People just call them different things in different areas, but they're really the same thing. I don't really know. Exactly. Um, I, need, I need to get more people on that have seen these things. I haven't done a, done a good rake or crawler episode in, uh, in a few weeks now, so I gotta I got go dig somebody up. But, uh, man, the Skinwalker thing is just so disturbing to me, and it's like, it's all over the, it's all over the place, you know? It's, it's up there in Canada with you, and it's, I'm, I'm having another person, which is very strangely named the same name as you, uh, on in three yeah, hours from now. Uh, with another skinwalker story who's in the um in the in the east uh of the US and then I'm down here in in the southwest where there's a lot of skinwalker stuff like over in Utah we've got the skinwalker ranch and then down here in Arizona we've got all the reservations and people people just you know they're seeing something and now it's now it's getting weird man uh there was a guy I talked to off the air a long time ago who's actually from here also and okay. he talked about um uh, he, he i can't remember if it was him or, him or his grandfather they worked um they worked out in, in the desert somewhere they were uh I think they were construction or something like that but he told me that like they would sometimes just randomly find the belongings of people out there like their clothes or abandoned vehicles and stuff and they'd find bodies and stuff and they never really understood what had happened to these people but it was all very mysterious and and he talked about one time there was a, uh, he was in a trance or something and just started wandering out into the South Mountain Preserve here um, a, a number of years back and then just kind of snapped out of it in the middle of the desert and just ran back towards town. And he just still oh, can't, weird. yeah, he can't explain what happened, but he was just wandering out into the desert one night and then kind of snapped out of it and like turned around and saw that the city lights and headed back met up with his brother and was like dude i don't know what just happened but i, I was i was on a, on the you know i was on a mission in a trance just walking out in the middle of the desert in the middle of the night i don't know what happened and uh, maybe that's what maybe he's being lured by something or or maybe that's what happened to all those people that they would come across out in the you know desert i don't know oh, you know it's it, oh that's creepy the phenomena is weird i i wish i could explain it further but it's a mystery and and you know that's that's where we're at now with this it's just super weird Super weird. There are a lot of those going on right now, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, if you uh, have you gotten any uh, like any recordings or anything of this uh, creature yet, or or uh, the, the the sounds or something, anything? So I ha- the only thing I've ever recorded is orbs, which to me are not good enough for anything, but. Um, the next time I'm going, I do intend to record. Yeah, let me know if you if you catch anything. You know, that'd be really interesting to see. You know, it's I, I had a guy on my show a number of years ago that was uh, he had something going on, super paranormal related. I, he had something screwing with the electronics in his house, and like he um he actually had a video that he sent me where he was. Like taking a video of like his, I think it was like a, it was one of those home assistant devices where it's like, hey Alexa or whatever, you know, and he, yeah, uh, yeah. he like a bunch of weird stuff was happening with it where it would like, um, it like one day it just gave him like the address to like a church or something randomly, like weird shit like Ooh. that. Yeah, and he so he was recording it like, hey, here's what's going on with my thing, and he was gonna post it on like YouTube and say like, has anybody else, um experience this like is there a fix for this i don't really know what's going on and then you can hear some just get thrown across the room like in the shower like in the room right next to him and he's home alone and so he goes uh 
So he, like you could tell in the video that he's like genuinely freaked out by it, and it's it's very genuine oh, reaction, very startled, like yes. you know. Um, and then he goes over, and uh, there's you can clearly see there's something. I, th I think it was like a, a soap bottle that was uh, that he kept his. He had one of those like tall showers where it was all glass, and he didn't have anything to put. Um, like bottles or anything, so they sat on the floor. So something had somehow, right. while le while being on already on the floor, had gotten thrown to get to make that Ugh. loud noise. Um, and you could hear it like bounce around. It was crazy. And what I found really interesting about it was that he mentions to me that after this encounter, his nose started to bleed. And then after our interview, oh, my, no. my nose started to bleed after we ended the interview, which I found really oh. unusual. And so I, I, I emailed yeah, him. I was like, bro, you will, you'll never believe what just happened. And, and he was like, no, no way. And it, it was crazy. It was it, like, this is a fun part That's of this. That's weird. No. Um, oh, also there. Um, that, that girl that I talked to about the skinwalker, or I'm going to start calling it a skinwalker now. I call it the mimic, but um. The, the skinwalker thing, uh, during our interview, in the master file, there's a voice that comes through onto the mic. And it was, it, oh, no. it was in my room because it was ca captured on my, on my microphone, and it was captured on the right. camera's separate audio. Oh, that is weird. Yeah, so it, it, I could tell that because it wasn't, it didn't come from her, it came from my end, so in the room, a female voice that was some kind of odd frequency <laughs> came through, and yeah, no, it's, it's, it's fucking wild. Um, I, I, like, it's still in the, oh, it's still in the master weird. file, and it's, it's on the live recording that, that you can listen to. If you go back and listen to it, you'll randomly just hear this voice kind of pop through. And uh, it's really easy to miss, but actually a viewer noticed it. I never noticed it. Um, and a viewer wrote in oh, saying, God. hey, you know, yeah. that, did you hear this distorted sound or whatever? And then if you like, it's, it's like it's this weird distorted voice that comes through. It's super creepy. But that is really weird. It's weird stuff. Uh, but yeah, honestly, I, I wish I had an answer for you. I unfortunately don't. I, you know, skinwalkers are, are a big question mark and, and they're they're freaky. This mimicry stuff is very disturbing. And uh, we're actually getting to the end of our time slot here. So I, I want to thank you for coming on and telling that story. And I love the skinwalker stuff. The skinwalker stuff is a lot of fun to talk about. And uh, it's, it's interesting, you know, because... Um, there's a lot of similarities, like the one that I just, the episode I just produced is like, like all the pieces are fitting together. It's crazy. It was just seeing all the, between all the episodes I've done and, and her accounts and, and her details about everything. It, it's just insane. Um, yeah. So yeah, why don't you, uh, let's just get into it. You know, why don't you start from the beginning and uh, tell me what you saw? All right. Well, um, this happened in about the summer of 2017. Um, I had just graduated from high school and I was doing a lot of camping with my parents because, you know, it's vacation time, and, you know, before college starts, I'm going to do a bunch of camping. So um, at one of the campgrounds that we went to, it was really interesting because the ones that we had been to before, you know, all the tent sites are really close together, but this one, they were really far apart, which is really nice because, you, you know, you get more privacy and stuff like that. And so one thing that, like, happened, like, while we were setting up the tents and everything is that uh, there were, like, a bunch of crows in a tree maybe, like, 20 feet away from where our site was. And I think one of them, like, ate one of the baby crows and then like all of them just started like attacking this one crow and it was, it was like wild it went on for like i want to say like an hour and 30 minutes of just like these you know crows making a bunch of noise and so you know later on it, it's they're getting dark out you know things are settling down and um you know eventually i go into my tent and i go to bed and my parents' tent was maybe like five or six feet away from mine. And I remember my mom like continuously saying like, oh, are you sure that you don't want to sleep in our tent? You know, it's, it's big enough for all three of us. And I was just like, no, it's, it's fine. And 
as like I couldn't I couldn't really sleep because I felt like, you know, it was way too windy and there were bugs and everything in my tent. So I started like getting all my blankets and pillows and stuff together so I could sleep in the car. And I kept on hearing my mom being like, Well, I'm in my tent getting all my stuff together. I keep on hearing my mom say, like, Oh, come in our tent, come in our tent and like I just remember like it didn't really sound like her that's that was like the biggest thing that like weirded me out and it was pretty it was pretty light so I think that they would have been asleep at that time so I kind of like say no I'm gonna I'm gonna go sleep in the car and so I get all my stuff together and I go into the car and it takes a little bit because I'm sleeping sitting up but I eventually fall asleep and um I keep on hearing like tapping like on like the windows and stuff like that what I, the I, actual I fuck i hear about that every goddamn fucking time that is so fucking <laughs> weird literally li literally I, oh my fucking lord the, literally the episode that i just produced three hours ago we during our discussions we talked about mimicry and during these conversations i brought up one of the first interviews i did with somebody where weird stuff started to happen and in my studio i had this girl on and she was talking about some type we, we assumed at the time that it was demonic this was years ago um that it was some kind of demonic like entity or something like that but now like hearing all the stories and what happened to me i'm really starting to think that she was dealing with something like like a like a skinwalker or something like that because oh my god so after we did this interview uh something started shutting down my cameras and a lot of i had a lot of technical issues and then i would hear at night i would hear tapping on the fucking windows that is one very wow. specific detail that was an occurrence for several weeks as i would hear little tapping on the window and i it, like eventually it all went away but that is something that is completely consistent between the account i did earlier today your account what happened to me after producing that one episode two years ago or whatever it was that is just fucking wild. Okay, continue. <laughs> wow. Holy. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, I'm hearing, like, tapping, like, on the on the car windows and stuff like that. And for, yeah, I just, like, I ignore it. There's, like, twigs and stuff, like, moving around. And, like, we're, like, deep in the woods. Like, so there's, like, tree branches and stuff like that. And I wake up, and it's, like, a little bit like right before morning, like it's like dawn basically. And I just remember like seeing from like the corner of my eye. Now people, people have like tried to give me like rational explanations for this. A lot of people said, oh, it was probably some, another camper who like came up to the car and was like trying to like look in or something, or just maybe it was just a tree or something, you know, it was so dark. It was, you know, I couldn't really make it out, but I think it was something I, I didn't, I was trying my best, like, not to look at it directly, because I was like, oh my god, whatever this thing is, I don't want to look at it in case, like, I don't know, in case it attacks me from the car. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I just remember, I probably sat there for, like, a good hour, like, completely still, not trying to look at this thing, and I, I like, closed my eyes for, like, a couple of minutes. And I opened them and they were gone. And, you know, I eventually, you know, looked at, out the window. Nothing was there. And I went back to sleep. And then I woke up in the morning. And I remember, like, everybody was like, oh, why did you, why did you go to the car? And I was just like, oh, I, was just, I, I just couldn't sleep in the tent. So it was way too uncomfortable. And that day, like, I remember, like, me and my mom were walking somewhere, and I was like, do you, like, remember, like, continuously asking me to sleep in, like, your guys' tent, like, before we all settled in for the night, and, or after we all settled in for the night? She was like, no, after I fell asleep as soon as I went in my tent, and I'm just like, oh, my goodness, like, was that... <laughs> something pretending to be my mother trying to talk to me or and 
for the rest of the camping trip, it, it was pretty much nothing really happened after that, except for the second night and basically the last night that we stayed there. Um, there was like a droning kind of noise, like up in the mountains and I don't know what it was. And like, I kept on like, everybody heard it. Like I remember we came back in from like the town, right up, like right where the campground is kind of at. And like, it was just like this sound that was like, it wouldn't stop. And I like asked like another person, like at the camp, I was like, did do you like hear that? Do you recognize the sound? And they were like, no. And my parents kind of just shrugged it off as for some reason they said it was someone playing like a didgeridoo, <laughs> but like continuously on one note for hours, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. Hmm. The, um, I'm I'm just convinced now that that all of but both of my mimic episodes I did a two parter with that girl where she came back on like a year later and we talked about it. Uh, I'm convinced that what she was dealing with was was one of these creatures. I don't think it was something demonic anymore. I mean, it, I don't know, man. This stuff is fucking creepy. Um, yeah, like I I have never seen so much consistency between reports like back to back to back like this. This is insane. I think I'm just gonna put you. I think I'll put these two interviews together because there's just so much going on here that's that's insane um but wow. what what do you think these things are let me ask you that do you think that they are a biological entity or do you think there is something else going on well where this campground was and where i'm from um a lot of the uh aboriginal uh communities they talk about uh Wendigos, and obviously on the West Coast, they talk about, you know, skinwalkers. And um, and also in the West Coast of Canada, where I live now, there's like a belief in the Wachuge, which is basically the um, the West Coast version of a, of a Wendigo. I don't know if they're all connected or if they're, they're separate beings or evil spirits, but I, I think that there's definitely something, something something's up, you know? Yeah, something's definitely up. The whole, like, shape-shifting aspect, like, animal look thing is just wild to me, you know? Um, you know, I've... What, uh... So, describe what you saw in, in a little more detail for me one more time. So, basically outside of the wind, it was like a large kind of dark figure. I like, like I said, a lot of people said that it was probably somebody looking like, if it, I don't like a hood, like some people said it might've been a hooded figure, but I think it it was definitely like, definitely the same height as like the car door, which is like a tiny little 2000 Impala car. And it, it and if it, it's probably at like that height, like looking in at me, I guess. No discernible features, like said, just I, uh just a silhouette. Yeah, I tried like I said, I tried not to look at it. I was only seeing it from like my peripheral vision. So I didn't really get a good look at it, but you know. Man, I don't know what these things are, dude, but they are so goddamn creepy. I um man. I wonder what's going on in these forests, man, you know, like, we, we've got them down here on the, what is it, the, uh, in the southwest deserts and stuff, that's where they're, they're really known around here, uh, especially in, like, the Native American communities, they, they seem to not really want to talk about them, and I, I've had a lot of people not come on my show because they think that, you know, these things are going to get worse or whatever it is. Well, yeah, they say that, like, where, where I'm from, they say they when to go it'll it'll attract them to you and you'll make them angry and they'll come after you. I I try not to say it too much, but um yeah, it's just, it's so like creepy. And my mother she apparently had an encounter with one of these when I was just like a toddler. She said that she was in the woods with me and my father one time and they saw something and they, they refused to tell me what it was but that's, that's what they say it was they say it was a wendigo 
What what did their uh what was their description like? Did did they tell you much details about what they saw other than what it was? The only thing that they would tell me about their encounter was that they were walking through the woods at some park, like some national park, and um the wind started picking up and my mom has heard various stories from the Aboriginal people from my hometown about, you know, if the wind picks up on a calm day in the woods, that's that's one of the telltale signs of a when to go. But no no physical characteristics from their accounts. Makes me wonder makes me wonder what they saw in the woods that day to the point where they won't talk about specific details about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely creepy. And they're they're big believers of like the paranormal and they're very interested in like cryptids and all that stuff. So I I, I think that they're big believers of it too. <clears throat> I wonder what these things are. You know, I really do. I don't I don't I don't know what it is. You know, I I wish I had a, an explanation for you, but I, I really don't think I do. It's they're just kind of this thing that people see and, and experience and no one really knows what's going on. And uh, there's the whole Skinwalker Ranch thing out here in uh, over, over in Utah. Um, yeah, and, I've heard about that. Yeah, you know, a bunch of weird That's... stuff. The whole scientist team getting sent out to study it and they couldn't figure it out is, is also pretty crazy. And, you know, I don't know what these things are. I don't know what they are. I'm not going to pretend to know what they are. They're freaking me out now. <laughs> It's like now I, I wonder see. if they're like connected. I wonder if they're connected to like the cattle mutilation that like happens like in the U.S. and stuff like that because that is some unexplainable phenomena if I've ever seen it. Yeah, you know who knows. Um, I actually talked to a guy off the air like two years ago, um, who had a cattle mutilation story. He never came on the show. He was a much older guy. And he used to live on the... This is one of my favorite stories that I've ever been told is... Because he, he was like he was like just one of those true witnesses where you're like, this guy's not bullshitting you. Uh, he told me that he lived on the North Carolina-Tennessee border and there was... Uh, they didn't really have neighbors, but like the, the farm across the street, there was a teenage boy or young boy that uh, was raising a, a cow for the state fair. And he would go out there, like halter train it every day and, you know, feed it and get it ready for the fair. And, you know, this thing was, you know, it was a, it was a, a decent sized animal at this point. And I guess one morning the kid went out and, uh, he freaked out because the cow didn't come up like it normally did. So he went and checked the fence line thinking it got out and he found the cow dead in the middle of the field. And, uh, like everything on the inside was just turned into like mush is, is what I was told. Wow. And that the, the dogs wouldn't go near it and that, the you know, there's just something was off about it. And like this thing had somehow mysteriously died and had all of its bones and stuff shattered overnight. Like, you know, how, how does something like that happen? And, and he was like, and it wasn't an extraordinary story other than that. And that's what ma makes it so believable, you know, is that it, he's like, yeah, I never saw lights in the sky or none of that stuff. But he's like, this is just kind of what happened. Cal mysteriously died in the middle of the night and I have no explanation for it. And he's like, I've never seen anything like it. Um, but yeah, fucking crazy. Yeah. It, it really makes you wonder like what, what is, doing all of this like what what are these you know what are these things in the woods that are you know trying to scare people i guess or get a get a rise out of them if it's even that if they're just kind of passing through and because we don't understand them we're just freaked out by them you know i don't i don't know what, right. what's really going on i don't know if they're what their intentions are. Right. You know, I, I can't even begin to speculate really, but it's uh it's definitely interesting. Yeah, yeah. So we are getting to the kind of end of our time slot. Is there any anything else you really want to throw out there? Uh no, that was basically it. I'm I'm really interested to hear this this other girl's story though. See the similarities. 
Yep, I'm uh, I'm getting right on that. This is gonna be crazy. I, I'm gonna have to put these together because they're just the way that everything just happened with this is they they gotta be one one long. I'll do one long episode for uh, for fun. I try to do at least one big long one a month, so that'll be this one's. Okay. But uh, I'd like to thank you for coming on, and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk to you See later. You.